My name is Tom and in today's video I want to show you how I used score studying to turn this into this. Studying scores is a great way to increase your orchestration chops. You can dive right into how your favorite sounds are orchestrated and how the different instruments of the orchestra are used. However, it can be difficult to translate the orchestration techniques you learn into your DAW. The VSTs you own will be good at one thing, but not so good at another. And forcing those things might lead you to lesser results. Scoring for virtual instruments can be, and is, considerably different compared to orchestrating a score. When translating a score study into your DAW, it's more about the general concepts you can apply rather than copying note for note what you've learned in the score study session. A couple of weeks ago, I came up with this choir phrase. <laughs> For the orchestration of this, I knew I wanted a big, bold opening with an orchestration that would support and complement the choir. Some of the harmonies I'm using in here have a very romantic, classical sound to them. I decided to look at a piece from that period, with the same sort of atmosphere, to see if there were some techniques I could use that would help me orchestrate this phrase. And there's one piece that immediately came to mind. DS ERA from Giuseppe Ferdi's Requiem had the exact atmosphere I was looking for. Big, hard-hitting, epic choir, supported with an orchestration that is all those things and more. Just what I needed. So I went to my favorite free scores resource online, imslp.org, typed in the grotesquely morbid Verdi dies and got myself the score. In this opening we have the huge full orchestral chords. There's no choir in Verdi at this point, but I wanted to have this big type of chord supporting my choir. In the score we see that everyone is playing this chord, but when you listen to it in Verdi, to me it sounds like it is carried most by the brass and the woodwinds. The piccolo is screaming on top and the brass fills out the middle register with their loud chords. The key for me here was to orchestrate these chords in such a way that the strings would be full but not too dominant and the sharp brass could really shine. Instead of taking over the orchestration of this chord exactly, I tried to have the same principles incorporated. The high woodwinds go with the melody and supporting chords in three separate octaves. From low to high, clarinets, oboes and flutes and the piccolo with even an octave on top of that. And I opted to have the bassoon just play the bass notes. I used the brass on the chords as well, supporting the melodic movement. And I'm just gonna omit the trumpets for now, we'll get to those later. For the strings, I give them multiple notes at the same time, imitating the double stops, but in a mid-register rather than a high one, supporting the other voices. When the choir enters in Verdi's Requiem, we can see and hear that the trombones and Offikleide, which is a weird low brass instrument, start playing along with the tenor and bass melody. This was a sound that I really like, so on the B part of the melody I have the trombone and trumpet supporting the choir melody. One thing I incorporated of my own here was to add a second voice in the brass only, not in the choir, to give it a bit more weight. Chords that follow in the rest of the orchestra are still based on the opening chords. Remember, it's not my goal to copy Verdi, it is my goal to apply his orchestration techniques into my own work. I've learned how he orchestrates these chords and how he supports the choir with the brass, and now I can use those techniques freely and start combining them into my own piece. <laughs> As we look deeper into Verdi's orchestration, we can see that the woodwinds are highly active on all kinds of crazy runs and trills. I tried to apply this as well to the opening, but to me it didn't really work. The trills and runs that I had missed the kind of aggression that Verdi's runs do. When this piece is performed live, the woodwind players know exactly what is at stake and will play those runs and trills as aggressive and fast as they can. I do not have this freedom of interpretation with the sample libraries that I have. I had incorporated some trills and runs in there, but they were taking away more than they were adding in this context. So 
this is where I decided to omit them and just go with the short notes. The trills do come back later where they blend more into the texture, but in this opening they just wouldn't work. Forcing them in would, in my opinion, only have weakened the orchestration rather than enhanced it. One great thing that Verdi does is create forward momentum with his brass writing. Let's listen to the trumpets in a later part of the piece. <laughs> Trumpets really drive this whole piece forward. They are also the perfect instrument to do this particular technique. They are very sharp and will always cut through an orchestration to make this rhythm stand out. The fact that they stay on one note only enhances that forward drive in my opinion. I really like this concept so decided to apply it into my own orchestration. Remember we omitted the trumpets earlier when looking at the opening chords? Well, let's listen to them in isolation. They provide a very nice counterpoint to the static chords and drive the rhythm forward in between them. I like this concept so much that it became one of the main building blocks in composing this piece. In terms of percussion, Verdi heavily uses the timpani and bass drum. I decided to go with the same approach even though I moved the bass drum on the beat instead of after it. I also added cymbals just to open up the high end a little bit more. That's how I used my study of the Verdi Dies Irae to orchestrate a choir phrase I wrote. What you take out of a score will of course be different for every piece you write, but some general concepts do apply when trying to apply this to writing in your DAW. It's not about the exact notes, it's about the concepts you take from it and how you can apply these to your own music. Feel free to layer and combine these concepts as you see fit, it is your composition after all, you're just learning new orchestration techniques. Some things will not work in every circumstance. Keep them in mind for other pieces, but don't try to force things that don't sound good into your piece. When you get them right, great, but don't sacrifice realism for them. In terms of that last point, there are two orchestration techniques in the opening bars of Verdi that I did not use in the opening, but rather in a later part of the piece. Come back in the next video to find out how I turned those into building blocks around which I structured my entire composition. I just want to shout out the channel of my friend Ernesto who makes great score study excerpts every Sunday and who made a video on how you can study more scores. You can check that video through the link in the description. I hope these concepts help you study scores more effectively when writing music in your DAW. If you're interested in doing a score study session with me, feel free to reach out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Happy composing and I'll see you in the next one.